Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the Brightworks. What I've got for you today is a very high-level matchup beyond all reason that was played between two teams that were practicing for an up-and-coming four versus four tournament. So, spawning on the southern side, representing the blue team, representing them with 43 true skill, the silver tail of chevrons to boot, a very prominent player, one that we've seen tune into the streams a couple of times, and we've seen in a couple of casts as well goes by the name of classic gonna be playing as an armada commander here no idea if there's any relation by the way to the starcraft commander i never actually got any uh actual confirmation on that i think it's just a fan but anyways classic here still very skilled regardless going to be going up against the red team who actually have a sweet little pro nickname here but the red team leader are going to be going by the name of pro elmer fudd 40 true skill and silver chevrons to boot this is about as high skill as it gets not only because it's a four versus four instead of an eight versus eight, but also because of course these players have known and played with each other for a good long while. It means we've got some good team chemistry. We should be seeing some well flushed out mechanics. We should be seeing some nice build orders that complement each other greatly. I'm super duper stoked. I guess because it's a four v four, we can uh, take a little bit of time here to meet all of our players. We also have Pro Randy, Stormblast, as well as Shamon or Shaman. Either way, going to be re making up the uh, representing or making up the entire composition of the red team here. We have Reed Sweet, we have Biggest, and we have Angry Strawberry herself going to be making up the blue. Should be some really really cool stuff. Now this replay was submitted to me over on the Beyond All Reason, uh, or sorry, on the the <laughs> on the Brightworks Discord channel. You should go check out the Beyond All Reason Discord channel too, by the way, in case you haven't. I'll have the link to both down below in the description section. I know nobody looks at the description section anyways, but you should definitely check it out in case you're looking for some uh, hidden treats. I always hide some good stuff down there. Excellent scouting right here from the Yellow Commander, Pro Randy. I mean, I expect nothing less. I just got done casting another game. I'm uh, recording a couple of videos. and I just got done casting a lower skill lobby. And uh, transitioning to the pros is definitely a different kind of a speed of match right here. You can see everybody on the blue team addressing these ticks as if they were the plague itself. And for good reason. Well, micro ticks can absolutely be the scourge of any commander. And especially even a single tick that get, goes unscouted and gets into a backline can absolutely mangle an economy and turn you into a useless hunk of metal and steel lying in the deserts of today's map. Kol Magorov remake, by the way. Forgot to mention that, but there we go. Subtle little transition right there. Hope you appreciate it. Meanwhile, a little counterattack of grunts headed across the map right here. Pro Randy, so preoccupied by controlling those ticks, didn't actually have any units on the field to deal with all of these units coming in. Starts up an LLT over on this expansion. Love to see that. It's a little bit of uh, forward thinking right there. I love to see that. But we do also have these wind turbines. Wind speed is collapsing right now, absolutely screwing over the yellow commander, relying desperately on that wind to keep the defenses and the metal extractors and all the rest of it up and running right here. Not like everybody else doesn't suffer from the wind speed going low right here, but certainly Pro Randy taking the most damage out of anybody else right now. Ticks are being mopped up so nicely in the back line right here, and all this will eventually be cleaned up, I do believe. Nice control right here from Strawberry, showing us, what the, showing us that she's got what it takes in order to keep this tick spammer at bay here. I say that with some, uh, you know, negative implications, but it's exactly what you should be going for as an Armada commander. Those ticks are so cheap and so cost-effective that you're really floundering your most most impressive early game advantage if you're not taking well advantage of how cheap and inexpensive and powerful those ticks really are nice deflection over here as well so hard to keep up with these pros they are all over the place ticks do manage to get into the back line ah a little bit of lost apm right there from classics ticks they could have probably sniped that constructor right there but it will escape with its life and go on to continue building expansions right now for pro shaman it was just going for t for uh bots in the back line right here pardon me Grunts moving forward. They do catch a Constructor. Very nicely done. Reed Sweet doing the most, trying to push through with these Grunts and do a whole bunch of damage right here. Classic and Elmer Fudd's commanders actually meet on the front lines. There is a single Rocketeer, and that's really all it takes in order to continue applying pressure to these. Obviously, a commander is more than capable of repairing any sort of uh, st static defense structures that are set up and that the Rocketeer is blasting away at, but it does tie that commander up to that static defense, right? So it's not going to be able to build any more static defense. Nice little run by over here. A couple of grunts sneak by and go after some of those metal extractors. Yeah, buddy, that's what I'm talking about here. Biggest showing us what he's got right now. Takes down two of those metal extractors and probably a couple of the wind turbines here. Ooh, a little bit of a micro dance going on, but we do see both of those wind turbines fall. Beautifully done by the purple commander. Says, hey, I don't really need to worry about your army on the front line. It's not so threatening to me at this point in the game. All I really need to worry about is shutting down your economy. And that's beautiful strategic thinking. I love to see it. A little bit of unclaimed metal extractors over here. Certainly somebody should go try and capture those if possible here. 
either the purple or the blue commander, or hell, I wouldn't even mind seeing Strawberry go capture those. Anybody should get those under control here. Ironically, made up perfectly, though, because these two are uncaptured as well. Must just be the hardest ones to hold on to. Ooh, a little bit of a commander trade up on the northern side. Okay, that's going to be Stormblast commander going down right next to Bigasus. The army is well in favor right now of Stormblast, though, so I'm expecting to see a Resbot pumped out here any second and sent up to the fronts. Uh, no. Okay, we're going to send a Constructor instead. I don't mind the Constructor, but it's not nearly as fast as the Resbot. Resbot would be much more capable of running up there a whole lot quicker. This is tragic. Grunt's in the back line right now, completely obliterating the economy right here for Elmer Fudd. Bunch of those constructors go down, which is certainly a problem, but also some of those metal extractors and wind turbines as well starting to fall, making the defense a whole lot harder. The trigger is pulled and Elmer Fudd's commander is pounced upon right here. Yeah, those blue units march forward just a couple of pawns, but it's all it takes and Elmer Fudd's commander goes down right there. Beautiful play from Classic, moving those Rocketeers forward and applying just enough pressure to the back line to distract the, the red commander from the front line, meaning that those units can go in for the kill. Resweet moving forward over on the right-hand side, trying to secure this area and make sure that these wreckages either go into their hands or go into nobody's hands. Obviously, degunning down any of these Rex is always an option to deny that claim. Yeah, there we go. Ritsui realizes it's probably not worth it to try and stick around and try and hold that, especially with these thugs being so dangerous. Oh no! Ritsui trading out his body for the corpses that were already there. That's an excellent snipe right there from Stormblast, shutting down so much of the metal over there, holding that line together. Now some ticks are running around on the mountainside trying to find an opening. They will indeed, actually. They're headed directly towards an exposed area. There are some grunts headed in this direction. It doesn't take too many grunts to shut down a bunch of ticks. Ticks do scale quite nicely, though, against the grunts. There we go. Take down one of the metal extractors. Eh, don't want to get greedy, though. Yeah, those ticks are going to retreat off that line. Meanwhile, reinforcements coming over here, including Pro Shimon, trying to uh, move the, the commander forward here to try and push back the forces in purple. These thugs are great if they can hit their shots, and the tick is one of those few units that they really struggle against. It's so strange how speed versus accuracy line up in a lot of these matches. Pro Shimon going to be the one who, at the end of the day, gets a bunch of this metal. Actually, a Resbot out here for Stormblast as well. And we even see one coming over from Pro Randy. Everybody and their mother trying to get in on the action, eating up that juicy, juicy metal. Now, those ticks that were sent to the backline eventually did a tremendous amount of damage back here, actually. Didn't kill the Constructor, though, so at the very least, most of this will be rebuilt. But my goodness, that hurts quite a lot. Another tick still managed to get away. The one that got away managed to get to the backline here. Luckily, an LLT will come up. These LLTs are damn right critical because, uh, or downright critical, pardon me. I accidentally swore right there. I meant to say downright, but I guess it was just a little bit of a slip. <laughs> T2 transition up and under. Well, actually well completed right here by Strawberry. She's got that T2 lab out and she's handing out some of those switchers. Absolutely critical that we get those switchers up and running here. Oh, can we see the LLT come up? There we go. LLT will be more than enough to clean up these ticks right here. Beautifully done. Just in the nick of time right here. Yeah, those LLTs are going to be extremely useful for shutting down these tick spams that have already been so, so dangerous on the other side of the map couple of pawns getting into the back line right here yeah actually doing quite about quite a lot of damage to the economy shut down some solar panels the real loss on the solar panels is you lose about 80 percent of the metal on those solar panels when they go down and the solar panels are quite expensive in the metal department so losing 80 percent of a solar panel and metal definitely uh gets expensive pawns pulled on top of these aggravators over here really nice pull right there actually from the blue commander yeah aggravators going down left right and center grunts are also pulled on top of this but the grunts aren't nearly as powerful in close combat you know what i think this line has fallen well under control of classic with that snipe right here on the red commander that metal has all been reinvested in units on the front line and you can see especially with the uh, slider bars right here which i should have pointed out a lot sooner this is one of those things that the pros are really good about but oftentimes gets neglected quite often in eight versus eight games but when you're at, when you're when you're one of the pros and you're working with the team and i wouldn't doubt that a lot of these players are in a voice voice call with each other talking to each other I have to imagine that probably, most likely, they're uh, communicating about who needs metal when and who needs metal where and who should get a Twitcher first and where the T2 transition is and all that sort of stuff. And there you go. You can see those T2 constructors being handed out here. Strawberry's got another one under production, already got her own. Building T2 mexes in the backline right now. This is looking really rock solid. Red team opting for a air transition here. So instead going into some of those air units, we're going for a bunch of Banshee right here. Banshee definitely have potential. Only takes about 10 of them in order to snipe a commander. Uh, actually, I think the number is 12. And it seems like a weird distinction, but I, for some reason, have this distinct this distinct recollection of killing a commander with exactly 12 of them, and it took until the very last one to kill it. Uh, anywho, might have been very circumstantial, but anyways. <laughs> Odd pull, but I guess that's what you uh, pay me the big bucks to know, right? The difference between 10 and 12 Banshees. Just trust me on this one. 
Pull, pull when you have 12 banshees, not when you have 10. Fiends here, hitting hard on the front lines. Yeah, this tech transition is ravaging the red team. So you can see the red team investing a whole lot more in tech across the board, whereas the blue team is going directly up the tech ladder. And these fiends, exact proof of exactly how powerful that can be. Burning away a lot of this T1, despite the amount of metal that's being put out on the field, it just doesn't matter if you have way more efficient units, and that's exactly what the fiends are. Now the red team has been, or the red player, pardon me, has been wiped out of the game over here. Elmer Fudd completely burned to cinders. I don't think there's any constructors left right here. Oh, there's a single con left for the red commander. Banshees will be pulled to deal with this. Banshees definitely not an ideal solution for dealing with these units, though. They will eventually tickle these units down, but it is uh, not necessarily going to be the quickest of deaths. Yep, Fiend's holding the line over here quite nicely as well. Pro Shaman, as well as the accompanying forces from the Hot Pink Commander. Wouldn't even mind seeing these uh, the, these Hot Pink Thugs handed over right here to the Orange Commander, since he's already microing all this. Then again, I guess the Orange Commander is also microing air, so maybe what we really should see is all of this handed over to the Pink Commander, whose lane this is in the first place. Pro Randy breaks the line, though. Reed Sweet falls. Production falls. Economy falls. Gravity falls. No, wait, that's something else. Mace is going to continue... Well, actually, not going to continue forward here. Um, huh. Okay. Guess we have more strategic interest in collapsing on top of this army over here. Going to be tricky, though. I mean, we have this... Uh, we have these Twitchers building the fiends and sending them out to the front lines. And those fiends eventually are going to burn away all the T1 in such a ruthless efficiency that it really doesn't matter how many T1 units you send to them. As long as the units are reclaimed, it's just really not going to matter. And you can see Reed Sweet handing over a whole bunch of the, well, basically all the rest of the wind turbines right here over to Strawberry so that she can continue pumping out units right here. We'd love to see some of these handed over to, yeah, there we go. That's beautiful. A lot of the units handed over right here for Reed Sweet to micro so that Strawberry doesn't have to worry about it. That's what I'm talking about. That is a proper high level play right there. It seems so minor, but it really does matter a whole lot. Classics Commander, Cloak's here to keep it safe from all the uh, Banshees that are headed forward. Well above 12 Banshees, so definitely enough to snipe this Commander. And all these units that were at one point harassing the uh, base right here of Reed Suite, now going to be used on the defense, and I don't think they'll find very much effect. Yeah, about as good a trade as we're going to get just because these fiends are a little bit slower going up the hills, but as soon as they crest that hill and start running down on the other side, it's going to be a whole lot harder to hold on to them. Only saving grace right here being that the banch or sorry, that the uh, fiend armor is quite thin. It means those banshees have even the slimmest chance of dealing with those. <laughs> Hero fiend goes down right there. Sheldon and Radar. Uh, and Radar Jammer. Could you name a more iconic trio? I don't think I could. Massive fiend run by over here. Ah, we went for a T2 transition, but we didn't eat up the T1 lab right now from the Hot Pink Commander Stormblast. Maybe thinking we were going to need that T1 lab in a pinch. But you can't really half commit to one of those things. You either have to make the full transition or you can't make the transition at all. Commander dives underwater over here. That's an interesting use case. I was talking about this before in the other match that I covered on this map pretty recently, I think. Uh, two videos ago? Three videos ago? Something like that? Uh, it's really weird, this big water area, because obviously tidal speed is not very good. The... Uh, only real use case for this would be the fact that you can park fighters and bombers and whatnot over there, and then you have a very short access uh, time to get to the enemy bases. One of the one of the few cases where I feel like it's useful, but other than that, it feels like kind of a strange way of the, ma the, 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 the map design over here. There's nothing to fight over over in this direction, I guess is what I'm saying. Sort of intentional, obviously, to keep players focused around these pinch points. There we go, we have these banshees handed over to the red commander. Love to see that as well. Red Commander's been knocked out for a good long time here. Randy's going to be in charge of rebuilding over on this side, I think. Oh, we're going to go for the Commander. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the Red Team with two Commanders versus the Blue Team single one. Oh, that's the last Commander. Oh, that's the very last Commander. That makes sense. That makes sense why we're hunting that Commander so brutally over here. Yeah, if we kill this last Commander, then that's game right there. These Banshees are moving forward. There's not a great anti-air defense, actually. We're pumping out a couple of Manticores right here from the back lines. Eh. Manticores will be fine. Not tremendous, though. Classic is forced to run away. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, Classic forced to run away right now. There's really no other option. Uh, you know what? Despite the crap I was talking about the Banshee earlier, 34 Banshees, 35 Banshees, pardon me. It's a pretty good amount of Banshees, yeah. We'll do about 1% damage to anything, but when you got 35 of them, that's only three volleys. Oh my goodness. Randy going for the Navy transition here. 
This is, uh, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Randy going for the naval transition to hunt down the last commander over here. This is hilarious. Who, who could have seen this coming? Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is really nice. Oh, out of left field, the Banshees do find their way into the back line right now. Yeah, there's an air transition for Strawberry. She set up that air lab and started production right here, but there's only a couple of fighters out so far. Yeah, the Banshees jump on top of the air lab. Absolutely the right move. These will eventually be shot down, but it's not like they're going to be shot down anytime soon. Brilliant play right there. Did not expect these Banshees to actually be this viable right here, but man, ending up being extremely, extremely potent. Finally, the fighters are going to shoot down enough of them that I think these Banshees are diminished. At least the threat of them, anyways. There's a flak turret as well, going to do some excellent work against them. The AoE spread on those flak turrets, quite powerful. And there we go. Banshee's dealt with right now, but certainly quite a lot of damage in the back line right here. Probably could have done a little more if we had just stayed focused on tearing down all the economy right here. Strawberry's going to be able to rebuild here, but this is dangerous. Uh-oh. Classic in so much trouble. There's a destroyer out now. Combing this, the depths of the seas with its depth charges to try and hit that commander. Oh, no. This is hilarious. This is definitely not how the blue team expected this to go. Suddenly finding their last commander in such a hilarious position right here, being bombarded by a destroyer. There's another one coming up right here. Yeah, Randy's just pouring all the metal in the game to killing this last commander. Oh, no. Despite everything, it really does come down to this very last commander. If this, if this commander goes down right here, that's the end of it. <laughs> He's just cloaked, so there's nothing. We need pinpointers. Somebody just built some pinpointers and you're going to be set. Oh no, we just need two or three pinpointers in the back line. This has all been destroyed though by runbys. Subsequent runbys to the northern side have just completely ravaged the economy right now. We need some pinpointers. Oh no, there goes another commander. Oh, can we get some resbots on that? Oh yeah, the resbots go in immediately. Oh, they're gonna reclaim. Oh no, 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 we need to res that. Res that commander to make sure that you have something to deal with all this. Torpedo bomber is gonna be deployed to shut down the destroyers. Somehow this has turned into a Navy fight. Earlier in the match, I was just complaining about how it's completely useless to have anything out here in the water, and suddenly the entire game hinges around what happens over here on the bottom right-hand corner of this map. That's hilarious. Pro Randy now walking the commander out here. Uh, uh, Randy, that is your last commander. That is the last commander of the red team. Torpedo bombers are in the air. You can't be walking the commander uncloaked. Oh, no. Oh, no, Randy. Okay, we finally cloaked the commander. My goodness, that was close. Suddenly, the entire tide of this has flipped as now there's tons and tons of torpedo bombers out. And the last commander is out in the water. Not at all where you want to see it. The other commander, the orange one, went down right here. Oh, my goodness. This is completely flipped back and forth. Yeah, you can see everyone and their mother sharing energy to Randy so that hopefully we can keep this commander cloaked right now. What on earth is the plan right here? I mean, we're going to trade the commanders out? No, the commander goes down in such a key turn of events. My goodness, I couldn't have predicted that in a thousand years. The blue team going for a rapid onset T2 air transition into the torpedo bombers to bait the T uh, or the final commander of the red team out into the water and ends up clutching the game with some torpedo bombers. What a nightmare. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful game. What a beautiful back and forth. GG to everybody who was involved. That was an absolute doozy of a match, and I sure as hell enjoyed it. Thanks a ton to both teams for playing in this game, and I can't wait to see you guys play in that 4v4 tournament. I'm sure both of you guys are going to kill it. Can't wait to see who comes out on top, though. And to you, I say thank you. Leave a like and subscribe, all that good stuff that YouTubers love to bug you about, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the very next one. Peace out, everybody.